Good morning, everyone. This is the March 2015 shop tour. Today is March 8th, so we're a little bit into the month, but uh, made some reasonable differences from last week. I don't want to say progress. I was going to say progress. Um, it hasn't been enough to have progress, but it's a little different, and, you know, as we do, we'll keep documenting what goes on. So, uh, starting over here on the right, that's Weeblow's projects for the Craftsman's Badge. We'll be working on that a little bit this afternoon, and then uh, we'll take that all to our meeting tomorrow, and hopefully we'll be done with the Craftsman's Badge. A little paint from a project I was working on, a pile of stuff to go in the attic, as there always is, and that stupid step that I still have to take out, and all the masonry equipment that's going to take the step out. Um, there's the saw, still absolutely loving it. I have to make a slight adjustment to this arm and uh, bring it in just a little bit because as it comes down, it moves back. But as I think I probably mentioned in the last shop tour, I have instructions from Laguna how to do that. I've just not had the chance to do it yet. Um, moving back, my table saw being used as a finishing table at this point. That's a small uh, bracket that's going to get attached to the wall. It's wide enough to hit two, hopefully even three studs, depending on how it's located. And then uh, the TV mount gets screwed to that. I don't understand why flat screen TV mounts are only 16 inches wide, which means that unless you center it exactly between two studs, it only catches one stud, and that's never made me comfortable. So every time I've mounted a flat screen, I've come up with some way of catching multiple studs, and uh, in this case, this is what I'm doing for my bedroom. So um, moving here along the wall, I've got these red cabinets, and you can see here, i got to get this thing out, but there's not much space between the edge of the planer and the edge of the table saw. So what my plan is, and I've been talking about this for a while, I've yet to do it, my plan is to move the table saw back a little bit and shorten those arms to, uh, right now it's got a 32 inch capacity on the fence. I'm going to bring that down to a 26 inch capacity on the fence. Um, and that'll let me cheat it toward the wall a little bit and plus by moving it in, it shouldn't be such a pitch point here because when I take the planer and I pull it out to use it because the front end is blocked by the dust collection a little bit, um, you can't walk through here. and <laughs> It's hard to feed things in the planer and take them out of the planer. Um, it's, it's just a pain in the ass, so hopefully that'll free it up. And I'm thinking once I get the table saw pushed back a little bit, I get this whole area cleaned out. I can get the bandsaw tighter into that corner. should open this front bottleneck section of the shop up quite a bit. So, anyway, I got to that because to do that, I need to eliminate this stack of these red cabinets. So, that's a drawer full of stuff I've removed, and I've been going through and pulling stuff out of drawers based on how frequently I do or don't use them. I'm not quite there yet, but I'd say I've, none of these are completely empty, but I probably have two to two and a half worth of the cabinets emptied and once I get enough empty I'll move stuff over and, and this will be the final final set. Um, over here I've moved my clamp bucket. I need to make a rack for this at some point but this is my garbage pail filled with clamps. This basically houses all of my non-parallel non-quick release clamps and uh, what I did do is I got rid of the bottom drawer there so that it freed up a little bit of space here and I'm able to move the bucket there for now. Here is my CT36 with the static conducting dust collector. What a royal pain in the ass this was. Um, I'd originally built this setup, and what it is is it's a piece of half inch plywood with notches so that it locks into the top like a sustainer would. Then there's an empty bucket that's screwed to the plywood, and then there's another bucket that fits inside of it, and the handles all hook on each other. But there's a bucket that fits inside of it, and then you've got the dust deputy. And the dust deputy works great, but when I first built it, I used a regular dust deputy, and I got so much feedback from people on Twitter about you can't do that, you can't do that, because it's gonna it's gonna cook the uh, it's gonna cook the CT, and apparently Festool doesn't understand static and builds their machine so they uh, they have to have this big continuous circuit going through them. Um, and I say they don't understand static. Clearly, they do understand static, but I think they should just make their machines a little bit more robust. Shouldn't have to jury rig all this crap for the dust deputy to eliminate it. Um, but when I talked to Oneida about it, they were so scared of Festool that I clearly thought there's got to be something going on there because um, they were not willing to tell me that this uh, setup I have now was okay. 
All they were willing to tell me was that this setup passes some stupid static test. Um, and they told me that the way I had it before did not pass the test and was absolutely unacceptable. But this isn't acceptable, it just passes the test. So clearly there's been some legal wrangling between the two companies and um, while Oneida is one to wave a legal wand around and did some nasty lawsuits to Clearview, I think Festival is doing the same thing to Oneida now and they all need to just calm down and relax. But in any event, this is now a static conducting elbow down at the bottom and a static conducting hose here and a static conducting dust deputy and at this point I don't care if this hose is static conducting or not um, this hose here is static conducting and I'm gonna say that it works I don't know uh, at the, I've, I've spent way more energy dealing with this static than I ever cared to so I'm I'm mentally exhausted by it and uh, and I'm done what I can do though is take this off while it's a great compact setup, it's taller than it used to fit underneath that shelf, so I'm not exactly sure how this is all going to live. Anyway, um, so we come back here on the bench. There's some Purple Heart. Here's a frame I'm making for my wife. Um, it's sanded. It needs to be wiped down, and then I'll put some more finish on it. I don't know if this is going to look cool or be a complete and utter failure. What I did was I, I cut the piece to be the size of the frame, that I put on the bandsaw and I ripped the, the two long sides off. So then I had a piece that was this width and here's the middle. It kind of, it'll fit right in there. Um, so then I cut the ends off so the grain of the entire piece is running this way. It, it's running short ways across these shorter legs. And I glued them back together and then I, I routed this out and I chiseled out the corners but you can see there you base you it's hard to see the cut because it's just a thin bandsaw cut that's actually right here in line with this edge so I think it'll look interesting when it's all said and done certainly it's not going to be that strong but it's a frame so I'm hoping that pretty weak is still strong enough I guess is what I'm saying so we'll see how that goes if it doesn't work I'll make another one it's not that big a project um, pieces of purple heart and the, the glass for it is in there so that's this side of the shop up here are all the pieces for the mock-up for Dave's trophy and finally have settled on design um, and now I just need to mill up the wood and assemble it so once I actually get working on it, it should go together pretty quickly I've I've not given it the time it deserves and I need to get get working on that um, here's the joiner Someday I will get the templates made and we'll be able to slide it back in, Greg. I haven't forgotten. Um, I just need to do that. Um, over here at the at the miter saw, I set up another dust deputy because this is the dust deputy I already had. I originally had set up on the festival, and after you know being warned that the world would end if I used it with the festival, I brought it over here. So what I have is an old rigid shop vac. I picked up one of those vacuum control outlets connected to this this dust deputy so when I turn the saw on it kicks on and kicks off and seems to be working pretty well. This gray hose here is the Bosch equivalent of the Festool hose. It's from a uh, it's for a Bosch dust extractor and the difference is the Bosch hose is like $32 and the Festool hose is about $100 uh, and I've been, actually been using this Bosch hose since I set the saw up, though it used to just hang here. And when I used the saw, I used to have to take that end and plug it into the Festool, and now it's got this permanent thing. So should be working pretty well. It seems to collect the dust just as well as the, as the Festool did. Um, come over here, my Cyclone. Nothing has really changed with this over the past month. I continue to use it. I really like it. Um, I'm going to do a breakdown. I'm not sure if I really saved that much money by buying all these individual components, but... It was an interesting build and it works excellent and it's fairly compact for what it is, so still very pleased with that. There's the planer. Um, and da, 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 box from an old shop vac, lumber storage. That's, uh, that's it for now. So that is the shop on March 8th, 2015. Hope your shop is looking well and we'll talk soon.